There stands two beings in an aftermath of a scene of chaos for the purpose of si simplifications, since we are only feeble-minded humans. Let us call them both men. The first man is formless and beyond comprehension. Even by the minds of gods, he is old beyond imagination. Old as the very concept of life, let us pretend he is a human, and that he is a gaunt. Black hair, pale skin, and a formal suit of an undertaker. He is perhaps fifty years old in appearance, with a look of polite tolerance on his face. His cane is decorative, and sometimes clacks against the silver ring on his finger. The second man is very similar and yet opposite. He too is old, though not more than a child in the ga gaunt man's eyes. He is, in some ways, difficult to comprehend, yet he is not formless, not by far, truthfully. He has too many forms, old and young, large and small, male and female. He has one with red hair he is particularly fond of. So perhaps more due to novelty than anything else, he is quite a fan of novelties. Each form is somehow different, yet, like that of an old friend, each form is somehow different, like that of an old friend. Though they all were wear unusual clothes, yet his eyes never changed. Not in the way that matters. They never lose that little, that look that says, nobody should ever lose what I have lost. It's a pleasure to meet you, doctor, said the first man mildly. I've seen you many times. I sometimes forget we've never talked. I'm sorry, interrupted the doctor in a characteristic, rapid speech. Who are you? The doctor looked around, his eyes scanning in the quiet, quiet chaos, as if wondering where everyone went. He takes in the incomprehensible details of the other men, and all of the horrific scenes around him. Before the suited man can reply, he pieced it together. Normally, he would go on about how he came to his conclusion. Even half an hour previously, he might have. There was always somebody who couldn't quite keep up, so he would give some rapid-fire explanation and get on with whatever he had been doing, usually running. I'm dead, he concluded, without any ado. He has nobody to explain himself to. He never will again. The ancient man nodded, still with the look of polite tolerance on his face. He watched the doctor kneeling on the ground, brushing corporal hands on the fragments of a plaque that read, Assist and M. Then the man stands. The sorrow slowly drains from the ever-shifting face as he focused his mind. And you are? A light does seem to go off in the doctor's head, and he rattle, rattles off. Grim Reaper, Time Wrath, personification of the foundations, living physical constructs, death. Death answered mildly. Death himself? Asked the doctor skeptically, but fascinated. That would make you a discreet part of the whole come to collect me, or perhaps a f psychic image? No, no. I know the feeling. Maybe there is only one of me, Death interrupted with a tolerant nod. Though I have quite a lot of help. I don't often visit personally. Oh, said the doctor, more quietly, 
rather put off by the having a train of thought interrupted. You've seen me before, but we haven't met. Oh, oh dear. I thought I'd make an exception. Death gave a small smile. There aren't many beings I see more than once. None I've seen as many times as you. A nostalgic look comes over the what passed for Death's face before tilting his head. Perhaps one a long time ago. Even so, asked the doctor, leadingly looking around. Isn't there something more important going on? All in good time, Death assured him, turning to walk through the carnage. You've made my existence interesting, and not many manage that. I'd like to enjoy the moment. I must say, I was a bit frustrated for with the first time. Time reset, resets itself. It was quite the trick, and I've been around long enough to see a few. The ever-shifting man has the dignity to look embarrassed. It was an accident, Death interrupted, with a hint of acrobic doubts. Like what happened to your home, you hid an entire planet from me, Doctor, and that is not something done lightly. Of course, continues the ageless entity, more calmly, that pales in comparisons to what you've just accomplished. Every one of the Doctor's ever-changing faces takes a look of profound wonder. You mean it worked? A weight seemed to lift from the Time Lord's shoulders. For the first time in a long time, something extra shines in his eyes. Death nodded. I thought you'd want to see, he said with a congratulatory tilt of the, his head. It is, after all, a remarkable achievement. I can understand wanting to know the ending. Suddenly, the two beings are far from where they were, far from the planet that had briefly became the most important place in the universe, the planet on which the maddest of plans had miraculously succeeded. They stand just outside the edge of the universe, watching the very last star go out. It's beautiful, the doctor whispered. Even now, it's beautiful, isn't it? Death nodded again, and gives a, a truthful smile. It is, he agreed. I'll tell you a secret, Doctor. I suppose you might understand, oddly enough. As the universe, what is left of it, flashes wildly, Death speaks over the sounds of roars of himself. I dislike my job very much. One could say that death grows in that moment, but in truth he is infinite. The universe is a toy to him. He who had reaped even gods in eons before now. Holding out his hands, he encloses the fading, roaring light of the universe. Beneath that great hand, there is no bang or whimper, but the incandescent, but the incandescency Sounds of deafening brilliance reduced to embers in an instant. Small again, holding what's left in his hand, Death admired the moat of light. Remarkable, he braved. Then he holds it out to the doctor, splaying his hand wide to reveal a soft glowing yet infinitely bright light of what was once the universe. I believe you deserve the honors. Taking the speck of the universe from death itself, the doctor holds it in his hand, held wide, and he weeps. Then he lets out a great rush of breath and breathes life into a new universe. Death takes his hand and pulls him away. I want to see it, the doctor says, pulling away. But Death shakes his head and holds tight, smiling mysteriously.